Hi and welcome back to our channel. I've got a shit ton of books and I'm going to share them with you. My first book is a non-fiction book and it's the only non-fiction book in the haul. I don't quite know why but um, generally I read more fiction than I do non-fiction. But anyway, this is Heimin Sunim's new book, Love for Imperfect Things, which I saw in Waterstones and I was like, oh my god, he's got a new book. And it sounds like something that a lot of people need to read at the moment. Like, as a society, I mean, what it says in the um, subtitle to the title is how to accept yourself in a world striving for perfection. And when you think about it, everyone is striving for this sort of, I don't know, pretend perfection because nobody can attain it. So it's basically accepting yourself for who you are because you are enough. And I think that's a beautiful message and it's gorgeous. It's got illustrations, amazing quotes. I've had a flick through already and I feel super inspired. <laughs> Next book is Milkman by Anna Burns, and this actually won the 2018 Man Booker Prize, which is how it came onto my radar. And then I read the blurb, I was like, yes. Milkman is a tale of gossip and hearsay, silence and deliberate deafness. It is a story of inaction with enormous consequences. And it just sounds super intriguing. My next two picks are by the same author, which is Sally Rooney. Normal People has been everywhere recently, um, it was long listed for the Man Booker, which Milkman won, and it also won the Costa Book Awards of 2018. So that really kind of, I don't know, drew my attention to it. And me being me, I always like to read, like, other works by the same author. This is her debut novel. So in my mind, this is going to be like where she begins and you'll see her progress as a writer. I think that's really interesting. It's like when you watch movies, you, if you start at a film director's first movie and then watch each one, they always improve. Um, my next book is A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. Um, reason why I got this book is because one, there's witches, demons and vampires. I mean, who doesn't want to read about those? <laughs> Um, there's romance, and I also watched the really awesome Sky TV show um, in December, and since then I've been wanting to read it. Next up, we have Virginia Woolf's Orlando. Um, this book feels like such an important book at this moment in time, simply because of the subject matter. Um, it focuses on a man that is around in the Elizabethan times, and then at some point for some reason he lives for a very long time and at some point he becomes a woman and so it's basically a study on gender and sexuality. Next up we have Gabriel Garcia Marquez's 100 Years of Solitude. Um, reason why I bought this book is because I've wanted to read it for ages because it is a classic example of South American magical realism and it has one of the honest to God, I'm not religious, <laughs> because it has one of the best first lines I've ever read. Let me just read it for you. Many years later, as he faced the firing squad, Colonel Aureliano Buendia was to remember that distant afternoon when his father took him to discover ice. How amazing is that? Um, as we're talking about magical realism, I had to add in Murakami, who is literally my favorite author in existence currently. <laughs> I sound like a weirdo. <laughs> Number one fad! <laughs> yeah, so this is his latest book, Killing Commentadore, and I've already started reading this. I do this a lot, like, I multitask with my books. I have, like, five books on go at one time. But anyway, I've started reading it, I love it so far, and it's just classic Murakami. So anyone that's never read him before, you don't know what I'm talking about, but anyone that reads Murakami, you just know that there's just this trademark style that he writes in, there's elements that always appear in his books, and it's just like a little familiar friend giving you a nice warm embrace on these dark winter evenings. <laughs> so basically this book follows a man who takes up in the mountains in the residence of a artist who is no longer of this world. He's died. <laughs> Trying to make it sound more serious than it really is. 
and then he becomes enamoured by this rather strange painting called Killing Commendadori. Um, I haven't got that far into it, so I don't know what's going to happen, but obviously there's going to be some weird going on. So these are some short stories. We've got one which is The Strange Library, which is rather unusual. It is one small short story, um, but it's got loads of illustrations inside, and it sounds a bit freaky and a bit like nightmarish, almost Kafkaesque. Um, so I'm really excited to read this because it looks cute, but it's probably disturbing as hell. <laughs> And then the next two are a collection of short stories. So we've got The Elephant Vanishes, that is a collection of all Murakami stories. And then we've got Birthday Stories, which has one Murakami short story and then several others of other authors. Um, so it's something that he has curated. So basically, I think that's kind of cool because it means that I am reading stories that my favourite author loves. So it's going to introduce me to a whole new range of authors, a whole new set of different stories, which I think is really cool. So we're just going to go across the sea from Japan to Korea. So these two books are from the Library of Korean Literature, and so basically that's a collection of loads of different authors um, from the Korean Peninsula. And I've already read quite a few in the collection, and um, there's just so many that I want to read, so I've got, picked up two new ones. The first one is At Least We Can Apologise by Lee Ki Ho, and this sounds quite cool. It's basically about a agency who off like write people's apologies for them. It's a satire, so um, it just feels like it's going to really kind of delve into Korean culture and just what it means to be human. Like, people find it so hard to apologise. So it's going to be a case study on human nature, which I love when literature does that. And then the other one is called When Adam Opens His Eyes, which sounds a bit weird, but it's by Jang Jung Il. And the reason why I picked this up is because apparently it was highly controversial when it was first published in Korea in 1990. A preposterous coming-of-age story melded sex, death and hide school. It sounds a bit disturbing, but yeah, kind of intrigued to see what this um, is. Next two books we have are um, Huang Jung Un's One Hundred Shadows and I'll Go On. There's hardly any Korean literature translated to English, so whenever I find a new author, I pretty much have to grab their books and run, literally to my Amazon basket checker. <laughs> These two are quite different for an author, like, one feels like it's going to be magical realism and fantasy, whereas the other one is, like, family drama and realism. So I'm kind of intrigued to see how this author sort of explores these different genres and different themes. Next up, we have Han Kang's Vegetarian. So I've already read it in English, so because I'm actually learning Korean, I thought it was time to purchase the original copy in the native language. I don't know enough to read it just yet, but when you have like a resolution, like I want to lose weight, you buy your ideal outfit or something in the size you want to be. Basically, I bought this book because I want to be able to read it, and so it's going to be sitting on my shelf reminding me, learn Korean so you can read it. <laughs> and now for the mother of all books, Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. Classic. Russian novel. Like, Forbidden Romance is my jam. Like, I just love people that want to be together but they can't be together and just all the drama that that entails. It's a classic. I've wanted to read this for years and years but the size has always put me off. Like, look at how fat <laughs> this book is. And our final entry into the Literature in Translation segment of this video is Franz Kafka's The Castle. I have a bit of a strange history with this book. So I started reading it when I was in year six. I don't know how or why the book was in my classroom, it just was. And I read quite a lot of it and I was so into it and I thought it was really fascinating. I don't think I understood everything that I was reading because I was so young. But then one day it disappeared, like it just disappeared out of the classroom and I never got to read it again. And so for years I tried to find this book because I was like, I want to finish it, it was so good. And all I could remember was that the main character was called Kay and there was a castle in it. 
I don't know how it took me so long to find out that it was the castle by Franz Kafka because it's like iconic. So I, I rediscovered it and now I bought it. Yay! We're reunited at last. <laughs> and finally, we have another classic. Uh, not Emily Bronte, it's Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I was gonna say Emily Bronte by Charlotte Bronte. <laughs> she gave birth to her own sister. <laughs> Yeah, so my final book is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. It's a gothic romance and I am all about that life. Love it so much, like Wuthering Heights, epic. Um, so I just want to delve more into that genre, like beautiful twisted romances just excite me and that sounds weird. <laughs> it's a classic, like I swear every man, woman, child and dog has read this book. <laughs> yeah, so that's a wrap of my book haul. Uh, let me know in the comment section whether you've read any of these books. And if you've got any awesome recommendations that you think I'll be totally into, then please drop them down below. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.